The oldest and most famous surviving furnace railway locomotive is Furnace Railway No. 3, an 040 engine and tender built in 1846. It was one of four locomotives built by Berry, Curtis and Kennedy Limited of Liverpool. Numbers 1 and 2 in 1844 and numbers 3 and 4 in 1846. Due to the isolation of Lower Furnace at the time, these engines had to be delivered by sea. A description of the arrival of the first of these engines in the Barrow Channel is given in Joseph Fisher's book A Popular History of Barrow in Furnace, published in 1891. Before the start of construction of the Devonshire Dock in 1863, the narrow tidal Barrow Channel ran between Barrow Island and the mainland, as shown on these early Ordnance Survey maps of 1851. Before the railway in 1846, Iron ore was brought in by horse and cart to piers on the shore of this channel along the line of the present strand. The last part of this cart journey would have been along a route from Dalton Road to Snyder Square and down this slope through the heart of Barrowhead Village. These jetties can be seen in this painting of 1844 by Jane Michelson wife of Thomas Michelson of Michelson House on Barrow Island. This view, I believe, is from the shore of Barrow Island looking north towards Black Coombe, with the line of piers on the right along the strand towards the houses of Barrow Village. Joseph Fisher writes, The last of these old wood piers or jetties was built by Messrs Schneider & Co and was erected right opposite the Barrow Harbour Hotel and ran out into deep water in mid-channel. The ore floor was situated where the Harbour Hotel and the old Lancaster Bank now stand. The superintendence of shipping the ore at this pier was conducted by Thomas Fisher, so this is the pier that received delivery of the first furnace railway engines. The first engine arrived, having been brought over on the deck of a tugboat from Fleetwood, which ran up alongside of Mr Schneider's pier, where the landing of the first engine had to be undertaken with tackle and gearing of a character which was unfit for discharging a heavy locomotive. The unloading was supervised by the aforesaid Thomas Fisher, whose words are quoted. Next morning, when the tide was at a height that left the deck of the tugboat on a level with the pier, we got to work, put a line of rails from the pier onto the boat, got the engine placed on the rails, made fast our ropes and chains onto it, and with a long pull and a strong pull and a pull altogether of about 100 hands, landed it safely on the hill in the presence of a large number of enthusiastic onlookers who cheered like winking as we dragged it along the pier and up the hill to a position about the top part of the present St George's Square. The engine was an object of great attraction for the local children who came to stand and stare, but who were frightened away in terror when the driver blew off steam and gave a shrieking blast of the whistle. Joseph Fisher writes, For several days they could not be induced to approach or go near the dreadful thing again, and cautiously peeped round the corners or looked upon it from various positions at a safe distance. It was not long before the engine got placed on the rails and commenced running between Crooklands and Barrow, the principal traffic consisting of iron ore. These four engines hauled all the trains on the Furnace Railway for the first six years of operation. Due to the domed shape of the copper firebox, they became known as the copper knobs, with number three, the survivor of the original four, becoming known as Old Copper Knob. Old Copper Knob is said to have hauled the first passenger train on the Furnace Railway in 1846 and ended its working days on Barrow Docks. Number three was withdrawn from service in 1898 and was preserved and placed on display at Barrow Station. In 1924, Old Copper Knob was taken to be displayed at the Empire Exhibition in Wembley and also made a short visit to Birmingham in 1938, but otherwise she remained in Barrow until World War II. 
Old copper knob suffered shrapnel damage during an air raid over Barrow and Furness in May 1941, damage which can still be seen today. After the air raid, the locomotive was moved for safekeeping to the railway works at Horwich, and then transferred to the Clapham Transport Museum in London. Since 1975, Old Copper Knob has been housed at the National Railway Museum in York as part of the National Collection. However, Old Copper Knob has been back to Furness since the war. Furness Railway No. 3 was here in the early 1960s and again in the summer of 1996 as part of the 150th anniversary celebrations for the locomotive itself and for the Furness Railway. She arrived back in Barrow on Saturday August 17th 1996 and went on show outside Barrow Station, just yards from the original glass display case. Number 3 then left by road for Ulverston to go on display outside the Coronation Hall and then finally onto the Lakeside and Haverthwaite Railway where she spent the remainder of a fortnight's holiday away from the National Railway Museum. There is another piece of early Furness Railway history which doesn't need a museum visit to appreciate. Furness Railway No. 20 is Britain's oldest working standard gauge steam locomotive and was built in 1863 by Sharp Stewart & Company of Manchester. No. 20 was restored by the Furness Railway Trust in the late 1990s and is still regularly in steam and drawing crowds at the Ribble Steam Railway in Preston. Its fascinating story is another one which would be well worth telling.